Uh, let me start with a little bit of personal history. Um, I think my first contacts with Thibault must have been in the early 90s when I got a little bit close to a small gravitational wave community working at CERN around a gravitational wave antenna uh, called Explore. Uh, I remember quite well that Thibault was very, very skeptical about the bars, cryogenic bars. And while he was very confident that interferometers would one day make it possible to detect uh, gravitational waves. And once more, it, of course, he was right. However, it was not until I spent a, <coughs> in Orsay uh, and IHES around 1998 on a Pascal chair that I had the great pleasure of working with him. We first worked uh, with uh, Alessandra Bonanno on string cosmology. I think Alessandra mentioned that. Then we had a paper on black holes and fundamental strings, self-gravitating fundamental strings. Uh, and finally, we had a few papers, a couple of papers on violations of the equivalence principle uh, due to a rolling dilaton. Uh, some kind of alternative to a mechanism that Thibault and uh, Sasha Polyakov had uh, earlier. So uh, then I think around uh, 2003, 2004, our world lines uh, kind of diverged for a while. He did great work, uh, meanwhile, and until recently, they started to converge again uh, a few years ago. And uh, this is what uh, this talk will be about. It will be about this uh, uh, recent reinteraction between the two of us. So let me um, start with a, with a few words of introduction and see why there is something on top of my slide but I don't want to touch anything. So, um, you know, the recent detection of gravitational waves from uh, binaries, compact binaries, has stimulated a lot of theoretical work on the subject recently. And uh, while the traditional methods for computing the expected waveforms, which are crucial to interpret the signals, like numerical relativity, which was reviewed by Bernuzzi, post-Newtonian expansions by Blanchet and effective one body uh, formalism that Alessandra reviewed, uh, these being entirely classical methods, there have been new approaches based on taking the classical limit of quantum mechanical scattering amplitudes. Now, this brought together two theory communities which traditionally had been very far apart, the one of classical general relativity and the community of high energy particle physics. And this generated a lot of synergy. For instance, uh, we organized a workshop at the Galileo Institute this year, and it was, I think, very successful and alive. But actually, the high energy community had been interested in the gravitational two body problem for a long time. Let's say since the late 80s. For instance, there were papers by Toft, Amati, Cefaloni, and myself, Muzinich, and Soldate, and quite in a few more. This was done for completely different uh, motivations. Um, we wanted to understand, for instance, the emergence of classical and quantum gravity from some thought experiments in flat space time. And this turned out to be quite a successful program. But mostly we would have liked to understand and shed some new light on the information paradox. If we could check unitarity of the S matrix, even when the process is expected to lead 
to black hole formation that would solve by definition the information paradox. And this, I must admit, has not been quite as successful. I mean, I don't have time to tell you how far we went. Um, now, in that context, the context of, uh, you know, particle, particle collisions, to go to high or to transplant an energy is mandatory in order to make gravity relevant, if not dominant, in the collision of two elementary particles. This is also important to justify a semi-classical approximation. So this is all to say that the ultra-relativistic limit was absolutely necessary in those, uh, in those studies. Now, uh, what, do you see the full text? Because I, let's yeah. maybe. Yes, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. No, 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 we can't hear you. He can't hear us. Hello? We don't. <laughs> we can't hear you. He can't see you. See us. Okay. So he has muted him, yourself. I think we need. You need to. Hello. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Oh, I don't know how it happened. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, so I repeat myself. Okay. What we yes. mean at the time was that also massive astrophysical black holes can be thought of as elementary particles. And so, if so, then those Gedanken experiments become all but Gedanken. However, of course, for massive black holes, the non relativistic, not to be confused with numerical relativity, is NR, occasionally the mildly relativistic regimes, but not the deterministic one, are the most relevant ones. Now, in spite of this difference, four years ago, Thibault suggested that useful input for the EOB, effective one body, could be obtained from high energy ultra relativistic regime of gravitational scattering. And this made a lot of sense because the so called post Minkowskian expansion, which is in particle physics language the loop expansion and expansion in G Newton at arbitrary velocities could then be anchored to two limiting cases, the small velocity post-Newton and expansion on the one hand, and the ultra-relativistic limit, you can have a handle on that on the other. This reminds me a little bit a nose talk about, you know, the, uh, the two regimes of general relativity, small c, infinite c. There are analogies, of course. Now, um, sorry. Uh, now, in uh, uh, a result and the and the and the puzzle, in uh, in uh, beginning of nineteen nineteen, an impressive calculation by Bern and company. Uh, you see at the bottom of the slide the full set of authors led to the first complete quote unquote complete, because we will see later in what sense it is complete, 3 p.m. or two loop result for the gravitational scattering of two massive scalars in general relativity. It was checked to be consistent up to 5 p.m. This is still again in quotation mark and later also at 6 p.m. order, but presented quite a puzzle the puzzle was that the high energy or just the massless limit of the result by Bern et al. exhibited a logarithmic divergence in energy in contrast with the perfectly finite result by Amati, Ciafaloni, and myself in 1990. Now, uh, note that gravity is supposed to be free from 
collinear or mass divergences. And so this was quite puzzling, quite some controversy came up together with a lot of confusion. Um, furthermore, both the massless limit of ACV90 and the Bernetal log enhancement at large S over M square were checked, double checked, and were even claimed to be universal. So independent of whether you have gravity, supergravity or what. And, and yet they looked mutually incompatible. And the prevailing attitude for a while was that the limits in which the momentum transfer is much smaller than the mass and the mass is much smaller than the momentum transfer with both being small compared to the total energy <coughs> are unrelated. Fortunately, the solution of the puzzle turned out to be different and in my opinion, happier. So this is the, the plan of the rest of the talk. I will give you a very, very quick reminder of the work of ACV just uh, to stress the basic formula which gave the puzzle. Then I will try to sharpen the puzzle and then to solve it. And the solution goes via the so-called radiation reaction. And then I will give two shortcuts to computing uh, the radiation reaction, one due to Thibault indeed, and finally, I will conclude mentioning some new challenges if you want to go one step further to 4 p.m. Three loops. So this is a quick reminder, uh, just a few highlights. What, what we did in those early days was were things like restoring elastic unitarity via an iconal resummation in impact parameter space three level amplitudes violate partial wave unitarity, but this is recovered after you resum. We saw the emergence of shock of a shock wave metric at order G, G Newton, which is, was also the starting point of Top's paper. And we extended uh, the calculation up to order G cube. This is this ACB90 result. Then we saw also a few other things which I don't want to spend time on, in particular, if you collide strings instead of point like particles, but today we are not going to discuss that. Or oh, I should also mention that we had the first go at gravitational Bremsstrahlung in, uh, uh, in these reactions. We found some kind of energy crisis, which was later cured to some extent, not fully, by in work by Gruzinov and myself and uh, work with Chapaloni and Polsonel. So the, the basic point uh, of the um, impact parameter S matrix is that it takes a semi-classical form in which uh, there is an exponential of a phase where uh, the phase itself can be expanded in powers of a Newton constant. So delta zero, delta one, delta two, correspond to the three level, one loop, two loop, and so on, which corresponds to order G to the N minus, uh, N plus one. And the following results were found in ACB 90. And here I only give D equal four, general relativity, and the massless limit, as I said. So uh, the, the, the leading iconal approximation is given by this formula to delta zero is GS over H bar log D square. And it gives the analog of the Einstein deflection angle. And I emphasize that that is a classical contribution because of, of the one over H bar, think about WKB approximation. On the other hand, in the massless limit, there is no one loop classical term, uh, it is completely quantum. You see there is no one over H bar in the second line. And uh, at uh, two loop, you find this result, this will be the main object of our discussion, a perfectly finite, as I said, two loop 
a contribution to the iconal phase and therefore to the deflection angle. There is also a radiation term, uh, which uh, will be of some relevance in a moment. So now let's look at the massive case because that's where the, uh, the puzzle came about. So we we'll try to sharpen first and then to solve this 3 p.m. puzzle. And this was in work by Dudecka, Heisenberg, uh, Russo, and myself. So to put the old um, ACV argument on more rigorous and general grounds, for instance, Q less than M, extensions of GR, and so on, we use general properties of the scattering amplitudes, real analyticity, the asymptotics, in order to write subtracted fixed T dispersion relations, crossing symmetry, perturbative unitary. From those, we get information on the high energy limit of the ratio between the real and the imaginary part of a certain contribution to the scattering amplitude. This is very much in analogy with what is done in high energy soft hadronic physics. It was very popular when I was very young. It's again kind of popular when analyzing uh, you know, soft like total cross section uh, data at the LHC. Now, the main result is this I, I will spare you from the, uh, from the proof that if the imaginary part of the amplitude goes like some power of energy times some log of S to the power P, then those model independent constraints allow to express the asymptotic uh, real part of delta two in terms of its imaginary part of end of the, uh, of the iconal phases and lower order uh, three level and one loop. And this is the basic formula that we got. Now it contains a non-universal quantum piece. I told you that Delta one has no classical limit. However, when you do the whole uh, expansion, uh, it comes out to multiply Delta zero, which has a, a one, a, which has a classical, which is classical. And the product of the two, therefore, is of the right order to give a classical contribution. Now, for P generic, we are left with a non universal P because this non universal P multiplies P minus one. And also, since neither in delta one nor delta zero have a log S, real delta two from this piece will not have a finite ultra relativistic limit if p is larger than one, because this will go like log s to a power larger than one. And indeed, when you look at the Bernetal result for this imaginary delta two, it has p equal two, and therefore uh, it's non-universal and also divergence. And this is why we immediately realized um, Bernetal had this extra log. On the contrary, if and only if P equal one, real delta two does not depend on the non-universal piece and even approaches a finite ultra relativistic limit. The above equation simplifies. There is still an infrared divergence in each one of these two terms, but they nicely cancel each other. And at the end of the day, you get precisely the, uh, the old result. Now this shows the crucial role played by the imaginary delta two. And imaginary delta two turns out by unitarity, perturbative unitarity to be directly related to the inelastic three particle cut of the two loop amplitude. What is it? So we recomputed that. The kinematics is shown below. By the way, this is called in jargon, the H diagram actually we Amati Chafone and myself gave it this name, but we have to be careful with what one means by the H diagram. For instance, uh, in ACV and in Bernetal, it means something different. In ACV, 
what you see here on the left hand side through to something similar on the right hand side is supposed to be the full two to three amplitude in the semi-classical limit, some limit, but the full amplitude. Whereas in Bernetal, it means really this kind of topology. Now, um, and indeed the full amplitude is less infrared singular than the H diagram of Bernetal. It gives a single <coughs> enhancement, so P equal one, coming from the rapidity integral. And, and that's why uh, it gives uh, a smooth limit for the deflection angle. Now, uh, we then decided to see really where the problem was because, you know, the contradiction was getting tougher and tougher. And then we computed the full amplitude, although we, for, for simplicity, because they're not easy calculation, we, we did it in n equal eight supergravity instead of general relativity with massive external states introduced by Kaluza Klein and at arbitrary energy. And the techniques we use are by now standards, differential equation plus integration by parts, but very crucially, it included contribution from what is called the full soft region, potential plus radiation region, whereas Bernetal had only included the former, the potential region. And then we found that at high energy, the sum of the planar non-planar ladders, which gives also contribution to the leading iconal, to the exponentiation of the leading iconal, but it also has uh, sub-leading contributions, which are of the same order as the ones coming from the H topology. And the, magically the log square S terms in imaginary two cancel in the sum, same by the Analyticity, analyticity plus crossing argument for the log S term in real A2 and everything works fine. Now, I'll give you just the result in n equal eight supergravity because I think it's pretty, it's simple and it explains the whole thing. So what is real delta two in the end? Real delta two, there is a P factor. These are the standard definition sigma times M1, M2 is basically S, you know, the Mandelstam variable S or E square. Uh, the arc cosh of sigma goes like log sigma. So the famous log, which uh, represents the puzzle is this guy here. Now, this term is the analog of the Bernetal result in n equal eight. And you see, if you only have this term and you go to large, Sigma, this goes to one, and this goes to log. And that's how the problem arose. But the new term we found are these two, indicated by the red arrows. And uh, this nicely cancels. You see, if you go to large sigma, this goes like sigma to the fifth or the sigma to the fifth, with precisely the, the right coefficient to cancel. So this log term, becomes subleading, this one becomes leading, and this gives the ACB lead. Now, one thing is, is that the new and the old terms behave very differently in the non-relativistic limit, which is sigma goes to one, or S goes to the threshold, M1 plus M2 squared. But on the other hand, you see, they go very, Similarly, in the ultra relativistic limit, so much uh, that they cancel each other. There is a similar rewriting of the same result in terms of the scattering angle. It's just a little more complicated, but you see exactly the same pattern of cancellation. And also the fact that maybe should have been clear already from the previous slide uh, that these terms. Uh, the new terms uh, from the point of view of the post-Newtonian expansion are half integer, namely they contain odd powers of the velocity from B over C. Now, uh, when we presented this result at the 
Albert Einstein Institute workshop in a, year, a little over a year ago, Thibault immediately jumped and grasped the physical meaning of what we had found. He said, just in the discussion, eh, after I gave the talk right, right away, he said that our half integer post-Newtonian terms meant that we had added to the conservative dynamics of Bernet Howe calculations, the effect of radiation on the iconal phase, so the so-called radiation reaction. So he immediately understood that that, that that was the solution we had found to the puzzle. And um, now, I don't know how much time I have. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes, uh, three more minutes. Oh, okay, fine. Uh, so, um, uh, I will end up with two shortcuts to obtaining the 3 p.m. Uh, result, the radiation reaction. One, in fact, I mean, the fact that uh, Thibault immediately understood what we were doing <laughs> explains why just a couple of months later, he, 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 uh, he derived the radiation reaction part of the scattering angle, this time, in general relativity, which is more complicated, as you will see, via a smart shortcut. And I would say chapeau, because I, mean, I thought it was really difficult, and I was amazed when I saw this paper. Now, uh, he used a previous result with uh, Donato Bini, relating radiation reaction to energy and angular momentum loss. He argued that only the angular momentum loss enters at order, uh, being of order g square, And then he computed this J rad and got the 3 p.m. radiation reaction correction. And again, uh, it nicely canceled the logarithmic divergence in Bernet al and uh, recovered the smooth ultraviolet limit. And his result has been confirmed by, other, uh, by another shortcut which I will explain very quickly in a moment, and also by full-fledged computations. It raises another puzzle, if you want a little puzzle inside the, the main puzzle, but uh, I had a, a couple of slides on this. What is the uh, true J-RAD? What is the relevant J-RAD? But for lack of time, I will have to skip this. There will be hopefully very soon a paper out by Wilkowski and myself dealing with that. But the end of the story is happy again. Everybody is fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll skip this. I will mention this other approach to radiation reaction, this time from soft theorems. This is our group. Uh, I will skip the derivation. It uses again, analyticity, crossing, and, and so on. And the main result is this formula, which I find intriguing and interesting. The real part of Delta II, the contribution of the radiation reaction, is direct, gets directly related to the so-called zero frequency limit of the gravitational wave spectrum which is controlled by Weinberg's soft theorem. So this allows, again, for a very straightforward derivation of the radiation reaction from a very simple calculation. And in fact, by proceeding that way, we were able to give the result in GR. You see the result in GR is much more complicated, but this is fully equivalent to what Thibault found. And, uh, and you can check again the cancellation of the Koch or R Koch terms and the fact that when you sum up the leading terms, this, <coughs> this, and this, you, this number add up to give this universal AC result. And we check, we recheck this also in n equal eight. In n equal eight, you don't emit only gravitons, you also need the dilaton, two vectors and two scalars, which come from compatification. You sum the contributions of all this 
uh, and uh, in the end, this time it's more complicated, but the end result in any case is simple, is the one I showed in the previous ones. I end up with just one slide mentioning that uh, there are new challenges if you go to 4 p.m. the loops. There is a partial result for the conservative part by Bernet Hall this year. Unfortunately, it exhibits the same shortcomings as the 3 p.m. conservative results, only worsened. Not only the ultra relativistic or zero mass limit is even more singular than the 3 p.m., but even if you go to finite energy, the result uh, is infrared divergence. And this is expected actually. In fact, adding radiation reaction, which is called the tail contribution in classical general relativity, is absolutely essential for recovering the finite result. It's a hard problem, is now under study by several groups, including ours. Probably Thibault has in his thrower almost a solution, but anyway, he already came up with some partial PN expanded results which are already available, but we'll see how we go from there. So the conclusion, I think it, it's quite, um, uh, maybe not worthwhile to spend the time repeating what I told you already. Uh, you know, there is this uh, full soft region which allows a smooth uh, behavior of the iconal phase from the deep, Newtonian or more relativist to the ultra relativistic limit. They are smoothly connected to each other. There is this some um, intriguing relation between radiation reaction and the soft theorems. You can see how it's mathematically equivalent to the Moore's connection with the radiated angular momentum, but the precise physical reason for the equivalence between the two methods remains to be understood. And uh, at 4 p.m., I told you, things are, uh, are still up in the air. But so far, um, um, okay, sorry, I think I didn't correct the slide. But today, uh, I mean, this is a usual situation. Solving one puzzle just brings up new questions. But for today, I would say let's enjoy this happy ending for a very, very happy birthday to go. And uh, I really would like to, to wish for the future more and more um, strict, uh, uh, strict interactions with him. And now that our world lines have converged again, I hope it will go on for a long time, possibly with new collaborations and really best, very best wishes to you to both. Thank you. Thank you. So in view of the time, if there's one urgent question, we can take it. If not, we move on immediately. Thanks again, Gabriela.